allows you to get that up fast. So when it's cranked tight, you can't do the jump either. Alright guys, it's opening day. You only get so many. This is my 2024 general season elk hunt in my home state of Utah. So, let's get it. We're in my home state of Utah, and this is what we call our multi-bull any weapon hunt. So most people know it as the rifle hunt, but if you want, you can choose to hunt it with a bow or muzzleloader. I've got the Weatherby 3378. It's my favorite elk rifle. And today we're gonna just fingers cross that we can get some of these bulls that we've scouted um, onto public ground. So this is a pretty tough hunt. It's kind of a strategy and waiting game as we're, we're holding pretty tight to some private property boundaries. So really sticking to the Onyx using the app quite a bit out here, but I would love to get off to this, this edge here and glass a bunch of elk and hopefully they feed over to public ground. And for a hunt like this, I'd say I'd be pretty excited to shoot any mature bull. So five point, six point, doesn't matter. Um, but it is one of my favorite hunts in the year. And I've been lucky enough to harvest some really, really nice bull elk on this hunt. And uh, one of my favorite things about it is just knowing that somewhere, someone today at, at first light is going to be sitting on the right knoll, the right rock, and someone's going to slam a giant bull. So good luck to everybody who's out there. Uh, we just got to our spot. I got Maddie Ice behind the camera, and let me see if we can make it happen. We can just post type right here and kind of move through the cedars. It's a good spot right here. You can see a lot of country. glassed up a group of cows and it looks to be the same group that we saw while we were scouting and there's a big herd bull with them big six point and I can see he's got a bunch of cows there and above him is a smaller bull so another small bull has moved in on him it's making him a little more vocal you can hear him bugle over there and then Matt's glass two bulls over here and they're just smaller bulls and they're over there just kind of hitting their antlers and fighting together. We could have a play on them if they feed our way, but we're really interested to see what this herd does because they got two options. They either go right or left. Right, not good. Left is good for us. There, he's bugling. So we're just gonna be patient. This is a patience game, guys. There's not much we can do. They've gotta come to public ground before we really make a move, so. Just a matter of time, I believe. Hopefully it's today. We've uh, got the herd bull. Her bull's got like 20 cows over there. Like a really nice five by six. And uh, the sun is just hitting his antlers right now, so I'm getting some really cool footage through the all in. Um, I think the biggest bull we saw is one that Matt glassed up the canyon all by himself. So there's bulls that are with the cows and there's also bulls that have kind of pulled off and they're just solo trying to feed and recover, so. 
it's uh, early October. Anything can happen. You can either get rut, you can get bulls out or solo. Kind of got to be ready for everything. Most of them have gone either down or to the left now. Packing up uh, the optics. We spent opening day perched up high looking over a lot of country and we saw a pile of elk. The herd bull that we've seen that I'd love to get a crack at, he's pretty much a, a five by six. We watched him for a while and these elk have two you know, decisions to make. Are they gonna go left or right? And we needed them to go left and they went right. I think we're gonna head out of here, see if we can't go locate some other elk. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you gotta hike into to see. A few gunshots today on opening day. So like I said earlier, somebody was sitting on the right, right hill. So congrats to those guys. Hopefully they got the job done. Um, but we're just gonna kind of cruise and cover, cover some country for now, but fun morning. Always cool to see them. You always just hope that they come over to your side. It's a p.m. hunt, guys. We're uh, getting ready for what's going to be probably like a very short hunt. It's so hot out here that I don't think the elk are going to really move much until last light. But we're going to drop in elevation so the terrain's going to look a little different. And we're going to go check some of these deep, deep, dark canyons. So there's been a morning of pressure now. There's definitely some gunfire up the canyon and we're thinking that maybe some of these elk, if they're in here, whether you either have resident elk or elk that have moved in, that they've been pressured into these deep pockets. So you never know. I haven't seen an elk track yet. We might be pushing the boundaries of where the elk are living right now this time of year, but the only way to know is to find out. One thing I do like is there's no people down in this mess. So if we find some elk, we might be able to have them to ourselves. So let's see if we are making a good decision or a bad decision. <laughs> Just checking things off the box. Earlier today, Matt and I were really, really high at some good elevation and we could see in the bottom of this box canyon. It's like super ledgy on both sides, but the bottom has a nice valley with some sagebrush and some cottonwood trees. So you would think that there'd be water down in there. And with water, I think you could suck in some of these elk. So we've got that valley, the steep side hills to glass, a little bit of terrain to our right, right here that's in super tight. But the thing with elk is that if there's elk living in this canyon, they bugle we'll hear them from here and that's all we really need to know to confirm that there's bull in here and then if not we can just glass these sagebrush flats try to get lucky and pick them out so we might hold tight here for a minute um, it's really unusual looking country but man one bull elk is all we need he could be in here we're uh, running out of daylight here been nothing for us and we I mean, knew it was kind of a risk dropping down this low but there's always a chance that something is held tight in these little cuts so based on the sign nothing based on the glass nothing based on the bugles absolutely nothing so if we don't see something then the next 10 minutes or so we'll probably bounce out of here and glass on our way out but yeah, I just don't know if the elk have made it this low yet. It'd be cool if they did, because we could probably have them to ourselves. Well, we got a little bit of good news, guys. My buddy Brady. He went to town today and he was gonna be driving back through um, a different area and I gave him a radio. 
And sure enough, he sees a bull on public land. Small six point, maybe five point, I can't tell. Or I guess he ha- he can't tell, but he says he's a, a bull for sure with about five cows on public. So too bad we weren't with him today or else we could possibly be tagged out right now. Um, but again, like I said, nothing on our side. So bombing out of here to camp and Brady's got some type of secret dinner. So if you want to see what the dinner is, stick with us because Matt and I, we don't even know what dinner is. But Brady's pretty excited about it, so I just want to say thanks to Brady for not only glassing, but um, his time and his dinner. Thanks, Brady. I told you guys Brady prepared dinner. Not only that, he saw all the elk on the public <laughs> land so far. Yeah. It's pretty much a guided hunt. Guided, <laughs> outfitted hunt by now. But he's got some specialty dinner. Well, in my this wi- it's my wife's recipe. Tin. My wife's recipe. How do you think you did for prepping it? Same way she does? Yeah, exact same way. So we'll see, I guess, you know, see how this it turns is Brady, out. by the way. Yeah. I don't know. Have I been on the channel? I don't know. We've gone hunting in the bow hunt, but I didn't really do much with that content. I never really got anything. Yeah, kind of. Maybe seen it was slow. on Instagram. With yeah, you. Brady's helped us with uh, those never miss targets, those big giant targets in my backyard. Uh, him and his partner John built that and gifted it to me. Yeah, um, I really built it. Our guys built it. We just kind okay. of branded it, you know. <laughs> I'm not taking <laughs> credit for that. <laughs> Fair enough. There's some talented dudes that built those targets, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we got the goods. Brady went to town and surprised us with a handful of uh, snacks, chips, and salsa. We got these little frozen burritos that Matt and I bought. That's about as uh, fancy as we got. Just a simple, you know, <laughs> frozen burrito. Put it by the fire, warm it up, hit it with some taco sauce. We're going to enjoy a good meal, hang out by the fire, make a game plan for tomorrow. Oh, and look at this bowl I filmed tonight. Check it out. So this guy was on the way back to your truck? On the way back. We hiked into the hole thinking we were going to see him down there, and they're on the way up to the truck. It'd be an easy pack out. And that brushy stuff, too. Mm-hmm. It looks like the five point that we saw, Matt. Yeah, just a straight five. Shooter? Dude, when it comes to public land on this open bull, like, I've been lucky enough to take some great bulls, but it's not, like, the goal all the time. Mm-hmm. I just want to harvest a good bull and fill the freezer. He's got a big body on him. He does. He had five cows. Yeah, like five cows. Mm. Is that what he had yesterday? You think? No, because it's we're, the same one. No, it's a different bull. Is it? Who knows what can be uh, pulled in with the cows tonight? Dude, I don't know. Are you going to be able to get that? Okay. He's wild. This thing's been cooking for like an hour almost. Possibly an hour. Whoops. It's almost 50, done. 57 minutes. 57 minutes. Did we, I, I was wondering if we like busted through the. How many layers, player? Here, I just did two, so I wrapped it two directions. See how we turned out. It's pretty hot. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, those crispy ones, you don't want to lose those. No, I got some on top. Grab those. Are those potatoes down? Yeah, no, soft enough to break. So we got a mixture of what? Tell us. We, we got, got peppers, potatoes. So potatoes on the bottom, and peppers, and some mushrooms, and carrots. And then we have meat with some salt and pepper. And then uh, cream and mushroom soup on top. And then we added some more carrots and peppers and mushrooms. And just layers of goodness. Just layers of goodness. Hard We're going to put some of this dip on it too. This yep. is like a, call it the secret sauce. <laughs> Sour cream mixed with a ranch packet. And then some lime. Lime. Yep. And I should have got some cilantro. That makes it even better, but it's good. Pretty pretty legit. Maddie liked it. I'm at. The dip was real good. Yeah.
Let's see, a little meat. A little chunk of meat, potato and pepper. Put in some of that. So my, my kind of meal. Yeah, good. Meat and potatoes. Heading to, bed, Heading to bed, make a game plan for the morning. Got decisions to make, places to be. Uh, we'll see you guys in the morning though, day two. Here we go guys, day two. And uh, I don't know if you can tell behind me or not, but we sure can smell it. Some uh, smoke is really starting to settle in from some Utah wildfires. Not too far from here. I'm not sure how that's gonna affect the elk. It's definitely not helping the glassing, but it's it doesn't seem to be too bad. Our visibility should be 2,000 yards at least. And uh, it's gonna make for a, a really pretty sunrise. So we'll give you guys a peek at that, but. We're gonna hike off this edge, pick apart these deep, deep canyons. There's a lot of nooks and crannies that you just can't see. And we're hoping that we either pick a bull out or one will pipe off a bugle and put us in position. So um, from here, it's probably another 10 minutes, 20 minutes to our little knob. And uh, just kind of sit in glass and be patient. Guys, we're making a quick move. Matt glassed a bull um, up canyon. And he's only like 300 yards from the public boundaries raking a tree. So maybe with him being worked up like that, we can call him over to our side. So we're gonna give it a try. to our lookout there was two bulls down below us and so we started ripping some cow calls and uh, all the elk did was leave so it's so funny because there's like a herd of 20 cows and a big bull up above them and in this personally majority of the situations I've been on like general season elk hunts when they know there's actual elk they they always just kind of like hover around them and uh unless you're close enough i haven't had a whole ton of luck like pulling them off so the two bulls they knew that the herd was actually up the canyon and they just headed that way they definitely weren't going to come to our side so we're grabbing our gear just going to go cover some country glass what we can of uh daylight and see if we can pick one out and get lucky we need some luck, big time. Breakfast champions for today. Biscuits and sausage gravy brought to you by Peak Tree Fuel. These guys are in the hush bucket. So the hush bucket has got our favorite four Peak Tree Fuel meals. So if you guys don't know what you like or if you haven't tried Peak, just grab a hush bucket. It's on our website and our mobile app. But eight ounces of boiling water for each of these. Maddie Ice and myself are gonna grub a breakfast. And I would say that these middays, your options are glass for bedded elk, sit on a rock, hopefully somebody pushes them around. Um, 
those are probably your two best options. I don't know. It's tough, guys. We can't glass very well right now because of the, the smoke from the fire. But tonight, I think we're going to go where I sent my buddy Brady and post up in that big, big country, giant area, tons of little nooks and crannies. And you'd think it's got a hold a bull or two. But after we eat breakfast, we'll kind of make a game plan. But, but it's been long, slow middays for us up here. Welcome to the PM hunt. Long, hot, smoky day. Uh, reduced visibility for sure. Um, but we're coming to a knob where we can see in the three different cuts that we can't see from up high. And hopefully there's water in this general area to hold some elk. If there's water, I think there can be a small quantity of elk. Not a lot, but I bet a, bu a good bull could pull into these cuts. So. There's a lot of these cedar um, side hills with this, like, we call it this purple bush. It's not oak brush, I don't think, but it's something that the oak seem to always be in and always like. So it's just going to be a glassing game. Stay high, stay put until we see something worth going after. So let's see if today's the day. Six forty-three, and uh, the sun's down, so we've got thirty to forty minutes of shooting light, and uh, it's not looking good. We haven't seen or heard an elk yet. Looking over what I consider some really, really good elk country, but apparently they're not in here. Or if there is, there's very few, and we can't see them. I'm gonna grab the scope and uh, look up canyon quite a ways, see if I can pick something out in the brush. But yeah, if we don't see any elk tonight, I think we'll just check box this spot. We might have to relocate camp tomorrow, who knows, but we're still in the game, it's not over yet. Get into the water. That drilled him right in the right in the boiler room. That was good. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's going down. He, he 
just went down there. Well, things happened real fast today. We didn't even film in the morning on our little walk down, but my buddy Brady just happened to be over here two days ago and found a five point bull with four cows. And we, we didn't approach it or we didn't hunt it yesterday, kind of kicking ourselves in the butt. It's the only bull we've seen on public. So we came in today and give it a try. And what do you know? He is right there with his cows. We got a shot at 480 yards and hit him, hit him again. And surprisingly enough, he, he took another one. So he's piled up down below us. We're going to go recover him and get him out of here. Lucky for us, it won't be a crazy pack out. But we're tagged out in Utah, guys, on the open bull. Well, we made it to the other side. That bull is right underneath us, like 150 yards, just piled up right where we left him. So at least there's a little bit of shade on that side hill because of those big pine trees and cedars. But we're going to cut them up, cool them off, and get that meat on ice. We've got ice on our 210 Yeti back at camp. But get down here, notch the tag, and make it official, and try to get out of here and probably get home to the family tonight so that's exciting for me and especially for Matt he's been gone a lot so this worked out perfect wow really really pretty ivories you can see where that last shot exited right at the front shoulder here he is guys, this is my 2024 Utah over-the-counter rifle bull. Um, I've been lucky enough to to fill a few tags on this hunt. It's one of my favorite and it, it's one of my favorites because it's a challenge. It's really, really a game to find a bull elk on public land. It's a very heavily hunted tag. You know, people love an opportunity to come hunt elk. And this is, this is one of my favorites because it's just challenging and fun and the first two days we really held tight to some private property. We we're kind of hoping that some of the other elk and that big bull would cross over to public, but they're just actually getting pushed further and further into the private. So thanks to Brady for taking a hike down this canyon. Two nights ago, we made a strategy to kind of uh, cover this area down deep and on the way out, which it's a good thing that Brady he left his lookout just shy of dark and on the way out he saw this bull with his cows in here so lucky for us he was actually still in here two days later and honestly not far off the top so we're gonna cut him up and take care of this guy but just want to say thanks to brady he's been he's been fun having at camp he's cooked matt and i some good food and uh, him and i have been on a couple hunts on this open bull uh, last year with archery we got after it together and we were unsuccessful and then this year, it was fun to have him right over my shoulder. Super fun hunt. It feels good to fill the freezer. I know Matt's shy of a uh, elk sausage. I think Brady's going to take a pile of meat, and uh, I'd love to fill the freezer. We're out of elk burger at my place, too. So thanks, Matty Ice, Brady. You guys are uh, fun to have at camp. You guys are always welcome at my camp. There's going to be some heavy pack loads coming out of here, but luckily, it's, uh, it's not too far. So this is going to be an easy one compared to what we're used to.